By 1973, the combination of composer-lyricist Stephen Sondheim and director Harold Prince had revolutionized Broadway. After the success of Company and Follies, Sondheim and Prince would venture into less groundbreaking territory structurally, but with no less artistry, with a little night music, based on the Ingmar Bergman film, Smiles of a Summer Night. Rivinan Filimin de Francine, de la Tour de Cassas. A Little Night Music tells the story of a series of love triangles playing out during the perpetual sunset of a summer night in Sweden. Frederick Egerman is a middle-aged lawyer who has taken for a wife Anne, a virginal bride of 17 who, after several months of marriage, still hasn't consummated the union. Frederick takes her out for a night at the theater, wherein the star is his former mistress, Desiree Armfelt. Anne, meanwhile, is clearly enamored with Frederick's son, Henrik, who returns the affections, but who is also highly influenced by the flirtations of the maid. Frederick rekindles his relationship with Desiree, himself in a dalliance with the jealous dragoon, Count Carl Magnus Malcolm. Carl Magnus is married to the depressed but caustic Charlotte, who wakes at his infidelities. All of these characters are brought together at the home of Madame Armfelt, Desiree's suspicious mother, for a weekend in the country. Once all of the players arrive at the isolated estate, the stage is set for a sexually charged weekend of thinly veiled accusations and unexpected revelations, where the mismatched pairs and triangles sort themselves out. A Little Night Music opened at Broadway's Schubert Theatre on February 25, 1973, running for 601 performances. Patricia Birch, former Martha Graham Company soloist, who also famously choreographed the original Broadway production of Grease, staged the elegant choreography, gliding waltzes that moved in and out of Boris Aronson's atmospheric scenery, composed of panels painted with pastoral imagery, under Hal Prince's deft direction, everything about the production was sumptuous and splendid. A Little Night Music fared well at the Tony Awards, where its chief competition was Pippin, which was its own uniquely stylized musical helmed by the great Bob Fosse. However, A Little Night Music had a triumphant evening, taking home the prize for Best Musical, Best Actress, Best Featured Actress, Best Book of a Musical, Best Score of a Musical, and Best Costume Design for Florence Klotz who crafted elegantly grand costumes, including her iconic red dress moment for her leading lady, as well as a startling moment in the show, dressing the entire cast in white for the Act 1 finale, A Weekend in the Country. Everything in the Little Night Music is a waltz. So even though the song is in four, bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, da, one, two, three, four, it's really a waltz. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, so it's like very, very small waltz. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, here we go. It is true, Sondheim's score is composed entirely in 3-4 time, or multiples thereof, with the idea that, quote, the whole score would feel vaguely like a long waltz, with scherzi in between, so that no song would seem to have come from another texture. As a result, the entire score maintains a strong sense of unity, with each song contributing to the total mood and feel of the show. Rumor has it, when a little night music was in rehearsal, Sondheim was having trouble ending the first act. To remedy this, he told the actors to improvise as their characters while he took notes and watched. He wrote A Weekend in the Country that very night. I've said repeatedly that I believe that teaching is a sacred profession and that art is a form of teaching. So, with the help of Bernadette, I'd like to teach you a little. Isn't it rich? The show's biggest hit song was almost an afterthought, written several days before the start of Out of Town Tryouts. The ballad Send in the Clowns from Act Two sees Desiree reflecting on the ironies and disappointments of her life. She looks back on an affair years earlier with the lawyer Frederick, whose marriage proposals she had rejected. Meeting him after so long, she realizes she is in love with him and finally ready to marry. But now, it is he who rejects her. Sondheim wrote the song specifically for Glynis Johns, a more or less non-singing actress. When he discovered that Johns was able to sing, 
Quote, she had a small, silvery voice, but could not sustain a phrase. He devised the song by ending lines on short cutoffs. It subsequently became Sondheim's most popular song after Frank Sinatra recorded it in 1973 and Judy Collins' version charted in 1975 and 77. Sondheim went on to win a Grammy Award in 1976 for Song of the Year. What once was a sumptuous feast is figs. No, not even figs. Raisins. Ah, liaisons. <laughs> <laughs> 